So this is going to be a Merrick Garland. So I hope you like the video. And if you do like it, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And thank you very, very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So, Merrick Garland, interesting person, and you'll be um, uh, probably uh, fascinated to learn about his history. It seems like he was always on this path for, for government service. You know, it's interesting how many of the people who are lead our country uh, started, uh, their family started as immigrants. That's just how it is here. But here's what I know, or what I wikied rather, about Merrick uh, Garland. So in the early 1900, Merrick Garland's grandparents left the Russian Empire for a better life for their children in the United States. Looks like it worked out. Uh, now, in 1952, Merrick Brian Garland is born on November 13th, so he's a Scorpio, and he grew up in the northern Chicago suburb of Lincolnwood. Uh, his mother was a director of volunteer services at Chicago's Council for Jews, and his father ran a small business out of the family home. Uh, Merrick was raised in conservative Judaism, and his fam the family name actually had been changed from Garfinkel several generations uh, prior, so Garfinkel to Garland. Very interesting, I think. Um, so let's see, he attended high school in Skokie, Illinois. You know, I spent a lot of time in Chicago, so all these uh, cities and, and the hamlets are familiar to me. In Skokie, Illinois, and was president of the student council, acted in theatrical productions, and was a member of the debate team. The debate team. Uh, in 1970, he graduated as class valedictorian and was a presidential and national merit scholar. Uh, he went to Harvard. Uh, uh, ha, ha. He went to Harvard University uh, for his undergraduate and legal ed education, and he majored in social studies, wanting to become a physician, but uh, quickly decided instead he'd be a lawyer. And uh, during summers, he volunteered as a speechwriter to a congressman, who later relied on him for uh, selecting uh, other clerks. Now, uh, in 1974, uh, Merrick graduated as a class valedictorian with an A.B. summa cum laude and was elected to Phi Beta Kappa. Uh, he attended Harvard Law School. Then, as an, uh, an articles editor, he assigned himself to edit a submission by a U.S. Supreme Court justice. So he's going to edit this thing from a U.S. Supreme Court justice on the role of state constitutions safeguarding individual rights, which helped him win a clerkship with the justice. Pretty good. In uh, 1977, he graduated from Harvard Law School with a Juris Doctor, uh, Magna Cum Laude. In 1978, Garland spent two years as a ju judicial law clerk for the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. And then 1979, he then clerked for the U.S. Supreme Court and afterwards spent two years as a special assistant to uh, the U.S. Attorney. 1981, he entered private practice at a law firm and mostly practiced corporate uh, litigation. Now, in 1983, he acted as counsel, this is interesting, to an insurance company suing to reinstate an unpopular seatbelt mandate. Remember, seatbelts, you know, weren't always a thing. To, so, to reinstate an unpopular seatbelt mandate, which has saved so many lives, and won the case both in the District of Columbia Circuit Court and in the Supreme Court. He argued in front of the Supreme Court. Now, in 1985, Merrick Garner was made a partner of the firm, and in 1986, he was a lecturer at Harvard Law School and taught antitrust uh, law. Uh, law. Uh, 1989, he became an assistant United States attorney for the District of Columbia and as a line prosecutor represented the government in criminal cases from drug trafficking to complex public corruption. Uh, and was one of three principal prosecutors handling the investigation into Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry for possession of uh, cocaine. There was a big uh, film out on that. Oh, interesting. Now, in 1982, Garland briefly returned to the private uh, law firm that he was a partner of, and I guess he was still a partner. And then in 1993, he joined the Clinton administration as a deputy assistant attorney general, deputy assistant attorney general, in the criminal division of the U.S. Department of Justice. Responsibilities included supervision of high-profile uh, domestic terrorism 
cases like the Oklahoma City bombing and the Atlanta Olympics bombings. I hope we all remember that. Uh, Garland insisted on going to Oklahoma City to uh, examine the actual crime scene and oversee the investigation. And he represented the government at the preliminary hearings of the bombers and helped pick and supervise the team from, from Washington. Uh, so he did that from Washington, seeking the death penalty and winning praise from the Republican governor of Oklahoma. He was a Democrat. He got praise from the Republican governor of Oklahoma. Now, in 1995, President Clinton nominated him to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia. Senate Republicans would not schedule a vote on his confirmation because of a dispute over whether to fill the seat. 1996, so this has just been a theme in his uh, uh, political career with the government. In 1997, Clinton uh, nominated Garland and he was confirmed uh, in a 76 to 23 vote. The majority of, the, of Republicans voted to confirm Garland, including Senators John McCain and Susan Collins and others. And then the no votes came from Mitch McConnell, Chuck Grassley, and Jeff Sessions, of course, all Republicans. Uh, 1997, he served as a circuit uh, judge of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit. And in 2013, Garland became chief judge of the D.C. Circuit, uh, serving until 2021. And then in 2016, you know, President Barack Obama nominated him as an associate justice of the Supreme Court. The Republican Senate refused to hold a hearing or vote. So again, and then in 2021, President Joe Biden nominated Garland as the Attorney General, and he was confirmed by the U.S. Senate as the 86th United States Attorney General. And that's where he is right now. So this, these are the new Palladini tarot. And David Palladini, um, you know, had just finished art school when someone asked him to do take on a, uh, a commission of doing uh, cards, and he did the Aquarian uh, tarot. Well, uh, 25 years later, uh, once he was an established artist, uh, he came back to the tarot and decided to uh, to make this new deck. And so um, more to his influence. And uh, this is published by U.S. Games. And the, the instruction booklet in this is run-of-the-mill except for the uh, part where uh, they talk about the new Palladini Tarot, where they talk about the artwork, and where the uh, uh, the artist actually speaks here. I mean, this is an interesting few little pages to read, so I don't know. I like it. But the cards themselves, let me spread them out so you can see them before we use them, are really neat. If you've ever seen the Aquarian Tarot, it's kind of a muted set of colors, and it's a great deck to use. Well, these are just more vibrant and um, really, really a nice deck of cards. I love uh, to use these cards. They're just really pop and it's easy to know what they mean and uh, they're great. David Palladini, thank you. But I like to do this so that you can get an idea of what all the cards look like and uh, maybe they'll help you figure out what cards you want to buy. If you want to buy some more cards or your first cards or, you know, I used to always wonder uh, when I was just watching the videos uh, what the rest of the cards look like. So that's why I do this. New, new Palladini uh, Tarot. Okay, so this is going to be Merrick Garland, Attorney General, his legacy 10 years on. And I mean the legacy specific to his um, tenure as Attorney General. Okay, Merrick Garden, Garland, Attorney General, legacy 10 years on. And I saw an upside down card in there, and I just do not like reversed cards. And I'm going to take a minute to make sure it's not reversed. Um, I, always, I don't really have a lot of confidence in my uh, interpretation of reverse cards. And so I try very hard uh, to just use um, the upright cards to make a, a determination. And I, if I give it all my all to make sure that happens. If I still get a reverse card after having done all of that, then I know that that card is truly, truly needed to be read that way. And I give it my best shot for interpretation. But as you can see, uh, I'm not happy to have reverse cards and I'll do what I can to tell the, the story with uh, the cards straight up. So Merrick Garland, Attorney General, 10 years on, what will his legacy be? Merrick Garland's legacy as Attorney General, 10 years on. And I want to be specific about Attorney General because these folks, uh, you know, obviously have other things happen to them after this period in their life. So Merrick Garland's legacy as Attorney General, 10 years on. Let's see what this uh, tells us for him. We'll take six cards first. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Merrick Garland, Attorney General, his legacy, 10 years on. What will the cards be able to tell us about that? Okay, the signifier card for Merrick Garland's legacy as Attorney General, 10 years on, 
King of Cups. So this is a very compassionate king, fully in charge of the emotions uh, that he's been charged with. There's some surprises that might pop out. There's some uh, a legacy here um, in this uh, ocean of emotion. And uh, he, he comes forth with this staff of plans. So th he will be seen as a compassionate, uh, or at least that's the signif signifier card for his legacy 10 years on. The challenge to that, though, is death. So death is not necessarily death. It's usually meaning the end of a cycle. So the challenge to the compassion that this king has is the end of some cycle, and then, of course, the beginning of something else after that. Very interesting. What is the cycle that's ended? The base of this reading for Merrick Garland as Attorney General 10 years on, Six of Pentacles, very appropriate, because the Six of Pentacles shows us the scales of justice are, the, are being weighing out um, the, the value that you have here and how it's going to be distributed, and having done this in a balanced and fair way. A very interesting card to be the base of a reading for an Attorney General. The past of this reading for Merrick Garland 10 years on is this Four of Swords. So really, and that's kind of how we're seeing him now, as being this very cautious um, a soldier taking a rest on his uh, sarcophagus. He has a sort of truth and justice right here by his side. Cautious not to get up too soon uh, because of the danger of these uh, swords of uh, rules, law, truth, justice above here. So this seems very appropriate and on point for Merrick Garland. In the sky of this reading, for Merrick Garland 10 years on, this Knight of Rods. So the Knight is the member of the Royal Court is going to take his Ed Rods or action forward motion uh, planning is going to take this and make it happen. The Knight's job is to take that plan, to take that action and bring it to fruition. Okay, so that's in the sky. The likely outcome of this then, this first part with this King of Pentacles is very good because here we have the King of Emotion and now we have the King of Worth. Okay, and this is a huge king here. Uh, this is a very good um, way to end this first part of this uh, Celtic cross for Merrick Garland. But let's see what the last cards will be. The signifier card for that question, or the self of that question, what will Merrick Garland's uh, legacy be 10 years on as Attorney General? Again, this Ten of Pentacles, like we had in a previous reading, uh, it's uh, Ten of Pentacles is familial wealth. So some sort of value that you're going to be able to pass on to the future, okay, that other generations are going to be able to take advantage of. Beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, self of that question. But the environment that that's in, however, is this Two of Pentacles, which is a balancing, a balancing act of getting things right. Okay, that's very good. The hopes and the fears for this, Merrick Garland's legacy 10 years on, Again, look at these strong cards that he's getting here. So this Knight of Swords, truth, justice, rules, law, a, uh, a, a servant to that, a, a knight, a warrior that's going to make sure this happens. Look at the, how uh, determined the steed is even. So this steed would be the Department of Justice, and this would be Merrick Garland. Very interesting hopes and fears. And then the final outcome for this Merrick Garland 10 years on as Attorney General, Three of Pentacles, putting something together for public display. You really want it to be perfect, beautiful, um, useful. And uh, this uh, fellow in this uh, Three of Pentacles, uh, typically we see this Three of Pentacles represented by the artisan, uh, someone with plans, and someone with uh, another opinion. But this fellow is all by himself and has really made a beautiful um, presentation. So... This is a very good uh, reading for perhaps how Merrick Garland will be seen 10 years on, what his legacy is for what he's done. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.